No, it's good. Hey. All right, so we're going to start Chapter 25, The Weather. Very appropriate this time of year because you never know what's going to happen. Um, so, like today, we were supposed to go out and, and go do a field trip. We end up doing it. Um, the weather changed. The people in the afternoon in my other classes aren't going to do it. Um, so they're, they're going to get wet, so we just won't do it. So the weather is constantly changing, right? And, and uh, the difference between weather and climate, climate is over a period of time, but weather is right now. And you guys are a, a now generation. You're an instant. So what we're going to talk about is how air masses form, uh, and uh, you're going to be able to explain that. The other thing, you're going to be able to list and describe the types of air masses and what normally affects North America. Now, there are other types of things that affect other continents and other areas of our world. Um, they hold the same principles, but we don't always see the same things that everybody else does. So we're going to focus on North America and pretty much us. So um, here's the difference. Air pressure creates wind, right? So air pressure creates wind. In fact, interestingly enough, I don't think it's a hard thing to remember, but when uh, you guys were kids, if you were up at the top of the stairs in a house, it was hotter than if you were downstairs. Or we could do it in this room, for example. If I have someone stand on top of their desk and measure the temperature up top, it will be warmer up top than down below. Hot air rises, cold air falls. That's not something that you don't know. You guys have been exposed to that all of your life. Now, here's the difference. When we have pressure, pressure is like a zit, right? So if you got a big old mountain zit on the side of your face, and don't tell me you haven't done this, you take the two fingers and start pushing a little bit, what happens is you increase the pressure, and then what happens? It goes, and it pops. Maybe some of it gets on the mirror, who knows? But it breaks open and it goes from high pressure to low pressure. Wind does the same thing. We move from high pressure to low pressure. Water does the same thing. Why? It wants to get away from the pressure. And so when we see high pressure situations, our wind is flowing to the low pressure. Okay? It wants to spread out. And so we talk about this as a body of mass, this mass of air. And depending on where this mass of air is, depends on what it's going to be like. So for example, if the air mass is over the top of the ocean, you're probably going to have a moist air mass. Why? Because water's evaporating going up into it. If it's over the top of a continent, Generally, if it just came from a hot, arid area, like a desert area, or an area that doesn't have any moisture, it's going to be dry. So we can have a continental air mass. We can have a maritime air mass. And so, depending on where you're at in the maritime, maritime means ocean, right? And so, you can have a maritime polar. What's polar mean? Polar means... And the poles, yeah, and it's cold there, right? And so, maritime means moist, polar means cold, moist, cold air mass. So, we have this air mass that's formed over the polar parts of the ocean, okay? Maritime, tropical. Where's tropical at? Any of the, yes, by the equator, right? And over the tropical ocean, so maritime tropical. Then we have a continental polar. What's a continent? Uh, where we're at. We're standing on a continent, right? Polar. Where would be a continental polar in North America? In North America. Canada, yeah. Alaska, yeah. Right? And sometimes if it's pushing down over us, maybe even here, if it travels towards us, right? Continental polar. Continental tropical. North America, where are you thinking? Mexico. Texas. Arizona. Florida. Right? 
North America, right? California. So California, Arizona. And so basically an air mass is this region that stays together. Now, again, why is it moving? It's going from high pressure to low pressure. We measure barometric pressure all the time. Why are we doing that? We're looking to see what's going to happen with our system right now. A big high pressure system coming in. It looks like we're going to have this beautiful sunshiny day. Highs in the near 70s. Go get that suit on, right? I mean, you see the, the, the weather guys and the weather casters. I call them weather casters because some of them are not meteorologists. And the meteorologists, you see them doing the forecast. How many days out do they do the forecast right now? Anybody? About seven, right? About seven days. So you have a seven-day forecast. Do you know where that air is, that, that piece of, of weather system, seven days that they've predicted is? Somewhere out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The reason why you don't see the... And now for the 10-day forecast. Why don't they do that? Because that air, that weather, that condition is somewhere probably over in Russia for us. Right? And so who knows what's going to happen? Anything can change. And so seven days is about the extent of it. North American air masses. So here's us. Now, you can see maritime polar, maritime tropical. The Arctic air mass really is above North America. It's in the ice, in the uh, Arctic Circle. Uh, continental polar, continental tropical, maritime tropical, and maritime polar. We have all of these. We have them all. So, and this diagram's in your book. Here's the funny thing. As weather moves... It affects other weather. Again, this is the immediate. As weather moves, it affects other weather. So, polar air mass. We refer to these as the Canadian clippers. I don't know why I said that with that accent. But the Canadians, eh? Right? So, basically... Cold, dry summers, cold, frigid winters. When we have the, the uh, um, vortex, the polar vortex, all that means is the jet stream is dipping from up deep into Canada down onto us, and it's bringing that extreme cold weather that's up there. So, again, polar air mass. Maritime polar Pacific. This is the Northwest. Cool rain winters, foggy cool summers. We're thinking the Pacific Northwest. We're thinking Washington, Oregon, Idaho, right? The whole area up there. Northern California, Maritime, Polar, Pacific. Polar Atlantic. This is the New Englanders, right? Think about it. Cold, wet winters. Why? Moisture coming off of at the Atlantic Ocean. Cool, foggy summers. Why? Moisture coming off of the Atlantic Ocean. Maritime, polar, Atlantic. We're talking Maine. We're talking uh, um, Rhode Island. All the way down to little bits of New York. Um, so, maritime, polar, Atlantic. Tropical. Tropical air masses. Continental tropical. We're thinking, oh boy. <coughs> Mexico, North, I'm sorry, New Mexico. Hot, dry Texas. Texas is very big, so it gets a little bit more different types of air masses too. But again, hot, clear, dry weather. Arizona, New Mexico. Parts of Utah. Maritime Tropical Gulf. Or Atlantic. Florida. Georgia. Alabama. 
Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. Are you getting a picture of where all these are at? It should give you an idea. Polar Pacific. Here we go. We're talking, uh, I'm sorry, Maritime Tropical Pacific. We're talking California. We're talking uh, all up the, uh, the Pacific Coast, right? But we're stopping at Oregon. We're stopping at uh, um, uh, Washington. Yeah, yeah. Why are we getting heavy thunderstorms? All the stuff that's coming off the Pacific Ocean. Why does the East Coast get all the thunderstorms? All the stuff coming off the Atlantic Ocean. The sun is driving the evaporation, which is driving the rainstorms. That's why our weather right now, as it increases, we're going to see more violent storms. Why? It's getting hotter, so we're evaporating more. More evaporation causes more storms. Okay, we're going to stop here. I'm going to hand out uh, 25.1. You guys are also going to do the book questions. Guys, I know we went fast. That's why we have this recorded. You can go back to see it. But thanks. You guys did a great job. Uh, and I uh, hope you have a fabulous day.